So I'm back with another episode on centroid and center of gravity. And this time around, we're going to be taking the case of a two-dimensional body. Uh, but but here, this body is going to have certain amount of thickness. And the thickness, let's say, is represented by T. So this is sort of a random plate okay, of any random shape. But one thing which is uniform is its thickness. Now what we wish to do is we wish to find its centroid. And whenever you're dealing with uh, flat plates, when you have uniform thickness, when the material is homogeneous and isotropic, by isotropic I mean the density remains constant throughout, then the point where the center of gravity is actually the point where the centroid is. So the centroid will be somewhere here. I'm not making it right now. Now, until now we have seen that center of gravity can essentially be calculated with the help of this formula. This is going to be a very interesting formula and this is something that um, we had achieved by applying the moment method where the result moment of the resultant was equal to the sum of the moments of individual pieces or individual uh, elements anyway we're going to use this to find the centroid of this shape over here okay so how can that be accomplished well i'm going to divide and rule i'm going to convert this shape into very small pieces okay something of this sort let me show you very small pieces all these pieces are having the same thickness okay this is happening inside this shape right something like this and let me randomly um, choose this one okay for analysis here we go now if you watch carefully you guys have to be very careful this over here is having a thickness as t okay so what else what else do we have this is having an area let's say it's a very small element let's say delta a1 okay the thickness is going to be common for all the elements the delta a1 is going to be different now guys it may appear to you that i have taken um, almost identical elements you can take unidentical elements also in that case the cross-sectional area that is this delta a will be different for each and every element so assume that delta a is different for each and every element now what we wish to do is we know very well that mass is actually a product of density and volume okay now the density is constant throughout as the material is isotropic so what i can essentially write is for this small element which is having a mass of let's say delta m okay delta m1 if this is element number one we write one over here so what i can essentially write is delta m1 is equal to rho times of this delta a1 multiplied by t will give you the volume of this very small element okay and that's delta a1 multiplied by t okay you need to put this up over here and then let's see what transpires here we go So the best thing that we can do right now is to take this rho and t as common from both numerator and denominator. Let's do that. Now cancelling rho t and rho t from both numerator and denominator and this is the final expression that we get. x bar, x bar can be written in this summation form also. It's a summation of x i where i is from r1 to n x i dot delta a i whole divided by again a summation in the form of area summation of a i now if you keep on decreasing the size of the element what will have is a point will come when this delta a1 will almost almost tend to zero will almost approach zero in that sense what we can have is that x bar will be equal to an integral of x dot d a and this is going to be a very interesting formula whole divided by integral of d a and guys in the same form you can also write this y bar as integral of y dot da whole divided by integral of again da and my friends this over here this expression over here is what you refer to as the first moment of area first moment of area why are we using this word moment of area 
because this expression has ultimately been achieved using this philosophy let me tell you if you can have a coordinate axis like this and if you can have an element something of this sort and you remember very well that initially we we had this okay we had this m g so that's x and that's y so when you take the moment moment about the y axis you have to deal with this x bar okay when you take the moment about this x you have to deal with this y bar so all this expression this initial expression was achieved using this philosophy okay what we essentially done is this force multiplied by this distance which is known as the moment and because of the moment we have got this expression in terms of area and this is what you refer to as the first moment of area more of a mathematical term than physics so guys that's enough for today i'll see you again with yet another episode on centroids and center of gravity until then it's a wrap this is manas patnaik signing off take care have a great day and keep learning thank you for watching